it is Bible time and I'm looking around for a helper. And I would like for Luke to come. Luke, will you be my pledge helper today? We are gonna say the pledge and then we're gonna sing My Country Tis of Thee. Class, stand. Hand over your heart and let's pledge. Oh, can you switch your hands? There you go, now you got it. Will you help me say the pledge and sing? Great. <laughs> Pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Put your hands right here by your side and let's sing My Country Tis of Thee. job stay standing and let's say the Lord's Prayer together hands under our chin and all eyes closed our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Nice job. You may be seated. I need some helpers today because we need to sing Rolled Away. Table two, come and help me sing Rolled Away, Rolled Away. Oh, good. I like those rollers, Carter. Good job. Class, stand. Let's get out our rollers. Can you guys take a giant step forward so we can have lots of room for our rollers? There you go. Here we go. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Every sin had to go. Great job. Take your rollers back to your seat. Nice work. I love it. Good job. Well, let me ask you some questions. Think in your brain. I'm going to call on you. Who gets to go to heaven? Kyla, who gets to go to heaven? Only the people who ask Jesus to be their Savior. That's right. Only the people that ask Jesus to be their Savior. When you ask Jesus to be your Savior, then your name gets put in that Lamb's Book of Life, and it can never be erased, and then you will be able to go to heaven. Can you know for sure that you are going to heaven, Kayla? How do I know that? Because you can ask Jesus to be your Savior, you're right. But how do I find that out? Where do I look in the what? Well, who, where would I find that information at? What special book? Well, not the Lamb's Book of Life, although your name would be written there if you're going to heaven. But what is this book called? The Bible, that's right. Because the Bible will tell me that, yes, I can have eternal life. Good job. And what is sin, Connor? Yes, it is. All the bad things we do. And who wrote the Bible, Jonathan? God. That's right. God wrote the Bible. Well, table one, come help me sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. <coughs> Class, stand. Get out your oaths and let's sing about it. Got your oaths? Again, I love that song. It's such a short little song. Let's sing that again. Did you bring your smiles? Oh, good. I'm glad. Get your 
sing that, that, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. How do I know that he first loved me, Carter? I can't hear you say it real loud. And took your sin to me? Yes, because he took our punishment for our sin. That's exactly right. Thank you. Good answer. Very good answer. Let's say this verse together. How about the boys stand? Boys, I want you to stand and say, First John 4, 19 begin. First John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. First John 4, 19. Great job, boys. You may be seated. Boys watching, did you say that with us? Good. All right. Girls stand and girls watching, join us to say Genesis 16, 13, begin. Genesis 16, 13. Thou God seest me. Genesis 16, 13. Very nice too. You may be seated. Oh, what does this verse tell me about? Hmm, Lucia, what does this verse tell me about? Well, he's not a baby in this picture, but what does it tell me about? Where do all our gifts come from, all our blessings? Well, not from the Bible, but from what? From God, from above. Let's say this verse together, class stand, and let's say James 1, 17. Let me have all my helpers. Lauren, will you stand and join us? James 1, 17, begin. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. James 1, 17. Very nice. You may be seated. Oh, and this verse right here will help me to remember the something very important. Cyrus, what do I need to remember? Not be afraid. Yes, that I don't have to be afraid. Class stand and let's say Isaiah 43, 5 begin. Isaiah 43, 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. Isaiah 43, 5. Stay standing. I like how you said those verses. And let's sing, I Believe the Bible. Table three, will you come help me sing, I Believe the Bible? I'll take that. Thank you. I see it. It's fine. All right, let's sing, I Believe the Bible. It's your Bibles. I Believe the Bible. be seated. Thank you for your help. And I loved hearing you sing. Good job. Well, it's time for my prayer helpers to come. I would like for Kayla to come and William to come. All right. Kayla, who would you like to thank God for? The mommies and daddies. For the mommies and daddies. And can you think of two things that God has made that and God has given you that we could thank God for? My dolly flower. Your dollies and the flowers? Is that what you said? Okay. And what else? You have the hiccups, don't you? Aww. All right. You could think of it in just a minute. We'll ask William. William, what? who could we thank God for? Um, My dad. Your daddy. And who else? Um... Um, my toys. For your toys. And what else can we thank God for? Um, the trees. For the what? The trees. The trees. Okay. All right. Did you think of one more thing? What? My bed. His, her bed. God gives you a nice bed to sleep in. Do you sleep by yourself in your room or do you share with your sisters? She shares with her sisters. Do you have a bunk bed or do you have your own bed? 
her own bed. Okay. All right. Prayer position. All eyes closed. That means our hands are folded under our chin. Our eyes are closed up tight. Lucia, we're getting ready to pray. So prayer position. All right. We'll go ahead and let the lady pray first. Can you pray real loud for us? Dear God, thank you for so much. Ace and daddies and 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 my trolley. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, William, pray real loud. Lord, and thank you far for the daddies in work. We thank you far for the toys in the world. Thank you far for for trees. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the trees that you allow to grow and give us fruit that we can eat and things that we can play on, Lord, and for the birds to have a place to live, Lord. We just thank you for the beautiful trees that we can see every day that make our world so pretty. Thank you for the beds that you give us that we can sleep on, Lord, and the homes that you provide for us. Lord, you take care of us every single day. You provide all of our needs. Thank you, Lord, that we can know for sure that we are going to heaven, that it says in your word if we ask you to be our savior and that you will take away our sins and then our name will be written in that lamb's book of life and it can never be erased and then we know that we can go to heaven lord i pray that you'll help us today to do our very best thank you for blessing us and loving us and we're so thankful that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above in jesus name amen all right thank you helpers all right let's see well, I think it's time that we talk about some things in God's Word. So close up your Bible, put it right here in your lap. We have been talking about wonderful things that Jesus did when he was on earth. Boys and girls watching, did he only come just to do miracles? No, he didn't. He came to win the lost. Do you know what, who the lost are? No. The lost are you. And me, those of us that have not asked Jesus to be our Savior. Now, I'm not a lost now because now my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But if your name's not written in that Lamb's Book of Life, then you're considered the lost. Because just like the lost sheep who went away and went from away from the... Um, from the herd and that the shepherd has to go find because they didn't listen and didn't obey and stay by the shepherd. That's kind of how we are before we ask Jesus to be our savior. And once we do, then he can welcome us back into the fold and we can go to heaven just like the Bible tells us. But if you don't have Jesus as your savior, then you're lost. Then you are not ready to go to heaven when Jesus is ready for you. And then when it's time and everybody's ready to go to heaven, if your name's not written in that book, then you won't be able to go into the gates when he's ready to open them up for us. So you don't want to be lost when it's ready for God to open those gates. Well, he came to let people know all about that, all about God, all about heaven and why he came, not just to do miracles, although he did do lots of miracles while he was on earth. And he's still doing miracles today for us. He will do a miracle in your life if you allow him to. Well, one in particular that we learned about was about a man, a man who had lots of friends. In fact, the Bible said he had four friends. And this man, though, he had a problem. He wasn't like his friends. His friends could go to work. His friends could go play. His friends could do all kinds of fun things, but not this man. He could not do all those things. Why could he not do all those things, Angelina? Because he couldn't walk. You're right, because he could not walk. He was born where his legs did not work. He was paralyzed. He could not work. He could not play. He could not do the things everybody else could. But you know what? The people were kind to him. His friends were kind to him. Oh, there was some people probably that didn't want to talk to him. But these four men loved God. And these four men knew that we're to be kind one to another. That the Bible says to, that we should love one another. And so they were going to love their friend. In fact, they loved their friend so much, they wanted to get their friend to see who, William? Jesus. Yes. Why did they want to get their friend to Jesus, Mila? Because why? What were they hoping Jesus would do? Mm, 
let's see if we can get you a helper. Jonathan. Oh. This boy listens. He obeys and thinks in his brain. Yes, he wanted his their friend to feel better. They wanted their friend to not be paralyzed anymore. They wanted their friend to be able to walk. And so they knew the only person that could do that is Jesus. They knew that they had a problem. Their friend had a problem, and they knew who to go to. Did you know that, that you could go to Jesus? Oh, I know we can't see him, but he can see you. Oakley, do you know that he sees you right now in your chair? He does. He saw you this morning when you got up out of your bed. He saw you on your way to school. He saw you when you got here to school, and he sees you right now. Does he see you doing your best? Does he see you working hard? I hope so. And he will hear you when you have a problem. You can go to him. You can talk to him just like we just talked to Jesus a minute ago. And Kayla and William prayed and they talked to God. You can talk to God too. Boys and girls watching, you can talk to God wherever you are. And he will hear you. And he will help you. Well... They knew they had to get their friend to Jesus, but their friend couldn't walk. Their friend couldn't go with them the way they could. They couldn't, he couldn't walk down the street to get to where Jesus was. How were they going to get their friend to Jesus, Elijah? To God. Well, they were going to get their friend to Jesus through God, but how are they going to do that? His, their friend couldn't walk. How are they going to get him there? Do you remember? Connor, how are they going to get him there? On a blanket. On a blanket, that's right. So they were going to carry him, weren't they? They were going to carry him. They were going to carry him down the road. They had to go a long way. They did. They weren't just carrying him from a bedroom to another room or from there where he was laying on the street asking for money to the other side of the street. They had to carry him all the way down a road, probably down several roads to get to where Jesus was. And where was Jesus at, Cyrus? Out of what? Well, there was a crowd. You're right. There was a lot of people. But where were they at? He wasn't down by the sea. He was somewhere. Where was he? In a what? Yes, in a house. He was staying with a friend. Because whenever Jesus came to a town, there were people that loved him so much they wanted him to stay with him. Do you invite Jesus to stay with you? Do you love Jesus that much that you want him to come into your heart and stay? Will you make room for him? Oh, I hope so. Well, these people wanted Jesus to stay with him. And of course, people heard Jesus was in town and they wanted to know more about Jesus. So they went to where the place where Jesus was. And there were so many people when they, then the four friends got to where Jesus was. There were so many people, they couldn't even get in the door. They couldn't even get to where the window was. There were so many people. How were they going to get their friend to Jesus, Luke? By going, going up the stairs. Yes, by going up the stairs. They were going to go up the stairs all the way to where, boys and girls watching? The roof, yes. They were going to get their friend. One way or another, they were determined. They were determined. That means they were going to do whatever it takes to get their friend to Jesus. Are you determined? Are you determined to do your best? That you're going to do whatever it takes to work hard, whatever it takes to obey, whatever it takes to do what God asked you to do? Hmm, I wonder. Well, these men were determined to get their friend to Jesus. So they walked all the way up those stairs to the top of the roof. And then what were they going to do, Johanna? Break the roof. Yes, they were going to break the roof. They started to take parts of the roof off. This wasn't their house. This was somebody else's house. Now, before they got there, who knew they were coming? Jesus. Jesus, that's right, because Jesus is who? God. God. And Jesus knew even before he came to that town that these men were going to come see him. Did you know that? Just like Jesus knew before you were born the bad things that you were going to do, and he knew he had to go to the cross to take the punishment for your sins, Jesus loved you so much to do that for you. Oh, and all he's asking in return is that you want him as your savior? That's pretty easy if you ask me. It is. He loves you. Well, these men started to take the roof off the top. They started peeling off the roof. 
And then they lowered, Jesus, they lowered their friend in front of Jesus. And when the friend came all the way down in front of Jesus, did Jesus get angry? No. No. He didn't get mad that, he, that these friends interrupted what he was doing because they were going, this was going to show people who Jesus was. And Jesus looked at that man and said, get up, roll up your mat and go home. Arise. He told him to get up. But he couldn't walk. He has never been able to walk since he was born. What was he going to do? What? He was. He was going to walk. Jesus spoke the words. And the man stood up, rolled up his blanket, and walked. He went home just as Jesus told him to do. But most importantly, also Jesus told him something else. Not only did he tell him to get up and walk. But he told him he was going to do something else for him. Jonathan, do you remember? Something for his heart. Take, take the bad things. Mm -hmm. He's going to take away all the bad things. He said, I forgive you of your sins. He told him that, that he forgive him of his sins. And you know what? There were some people there and they were very upset. They thought only God can do that. Only God can forgive sins. Well, who is Jesus? God. God. So he could do those things. And these people were not happy about that. But Jesus knew what he was doing. Jesus did a miracle that day to show the people who he was. And that man was so happy. Oh, all the way home he was telling everybody about Jesus, telling everybody what his friends did for him. Oh, aren't you glad that this man obeyed, that this man did what God told him to do, to get up and walk. If he would have said, no, I can't do it. I need my friends. I need my friends to help me up. I can't do it. Did he need a cane to help him walk home? No. no. Did he need a wheelchair to help him walk home? No, he didn't need any of those things. Because when God told him to get up, his legs were strong. His legs were perfect. And he was able to go home. Oh, what a mighty God we have. I'm so glad that God did that. And I'm so glad that this man obeyed. Obedience brings the lessons. Oh, and his friends were so happy for him. Oh, they weren't jealous that he got something special. They weren't upset. They loved their friend. They were so happy that their friend now could walk. And now their friend could go hang out with them. Now their friend could go and have a job. Now their friend could do all kinds of wonderful things because he obeyed and did what God told him to do. Oh, I hope you're that kind of friend. I hope you're the kind of friend that shows your friends how to obey and shows your friends how to do your best. And that if your friend has a problem, that you will help them. And I hope you have friends that are like that, that will help you, that you have good friends, friends that want to help you to obey and do what is right. Oh, what a wonderful thing Jesus did that day. He healed that man and helped him to obey. But most importantly, he healed his heart. Will you let God heal your heart today, boys and girls watching? Do you have sin in your heart that you need to confess and ask Jesus to take away? He will. He'll wash it white as snow. And if you haven't asked Jesus to be your Savior, he's ready for you. He has his book ready, open, so he can write your name in it. He just needs you to ask him to be your Savior. And I hope that you will do so. Class, stand and let's sing a song. Let's sing the gospel train. And I would like for the girls to come. Girls, will you come and help me sing the gospel train? All right. Lauren, right there. Girls watching, you get on our gospel train as well. And let's sing about it. Oh, I'm traveling on the hallelujah line on the good old gospel train. Nice job. Oh, thank you so much, girls. You may chug, chug, chug back to your seats. Thank you. Oh, I hope you are going to get on that train. I hope you're going to let Jesus take away those sins so you never have to go back to that station of sin again, that you will ask Jesus to be your Savior. Boys, why don't you come and you can get on the train? 
and Jesus, because Jesus wants everybody to be on the train. He wants everybody to go to heaven. Girls, stand. Oh, I'm traveling on the hallelujah line on the good old gospel train. I am on the right track and never will go back to the station of sin again. I need no fair I'm riding on a bus, tis the blood for sinners slain. I am traveling on the hallelujah line on the good Nice job, boys. You may be seated. He wants everybody to get to go to heaven. He does. So he wants everybody to get to go on that train. But will everybody get to go to heaven? No. No, he, not everybody will. How come not everybody will get to go to heaven? Because Jesus to be their Savior. That's right. Only the people that ask Jesus to be their Savior will get to go to heaven. And if you haven't done that, I hope you will soon. Let Jesus take away those sins and ask him to be your savior. Let him do a miracle in your life. Let him help you, but only if he is your savior. And I hope you will let him do that for you today.